about infrared data transmission. Essentially remote controls, just like the one that you use with your TV. Um, all remote controls are fitted with, well, an LED of sorts uh, that shines infrared light. Now, infrared light is just like visible light, except it's got a lower frequency. So when you go on the spectrum, and you just go past the red in terms of lower frequencies, and you get infrared. Now, a human eye can't see it, so when I push this button, as I'm looking at it, I can't see anything, but you, because of the camera detection being slightly different from human, you should be able to see some blinking thing. Now, even though it may not look like that, this light is blinking at 5,000 intervals, so it's 5 kilohertz, 5,000 intervals per second. So 5,000 times a second, it's either on or off, and for every time it's on, it's transmitting a 1, every time it's off, it's transmitting a 0. So this sequence of 1s and zeros is essentially a unique code, which is transmitted to this receiver. Now inside this receiver are two familiar uh, elements that we've had in previous tutorials, especially tutorial 5. We're talking about a light-dependent resistor and a transistor. So essentially, a transistor amplifies the light signal and the LDR detects it. Now, after this receives the signal, it's, it goes through a series of algorithms that try to get rid of the noise. Because, you know, these lamps that are illuminating us and the sun and a lot of other things also transmit infrared radiation. So, um... Yes, this data filtering is quite a sophisticated process, and I talk a lot more about it in a tutorial that you should definitely see. I'll put a link in there. Uh, it's about uh, radio frequency data transmission. But, anyhow, with these remotes, I'm going to try to make the simplest circuit possible that actually makes good use of this remote, and I'll try to use the least sophisticated code. So, something that pretty much anyone can understand. So, to wire this guy up, as you can see, he's got a minus here, the middle one is plus, and S is for signal. So, we're just going to plonk him in, uh, perhaps we'll do it on the side here, because I'm going to put in four LEDs. And, so if that's minus, I'll put that into G and D. The next one goes into 5 volts. One, two. The signal, I'm going to use pin 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm also going to put in 4 LEDs that are going to be controlled by the remote control. So to do that, I'm probably going to go something like 8, 10. Alright, so there we are. Um, we've got four LEDs in, and I think I forgot to put uh, a G and D pin between the blue rail and the my breadboard's acting a bit dodgy. Alright. Well, that's that. Let's go write some code. <sighs> so, here's the program. And for it, we're using this irremote.h library. Now, uh, we do need a library that's going to essentially do two functions. The first being deal with all the noise uh, that is coming in along with the signal. Because the signal is sent in terms of uh, heat pulses, it can be easily interrupted by the fact that, you know, we have heat coming in from the lights, heat coming in as the heat from my own body that I'm near it, heat coming in from other sources in the environment. All of that essentially needs to be filtered. And secondly, the library uh, takes all these 1010100 uh, binary signals and separates them into distinct packets of data. So, for example, when we press a specific number, we receive a specific sequence uh, into the, into the uh, receiver.
then we can use this to say form an if function and do something useful with it. Um, next up we have the RECV pin as number five. So pin number five is going to basically receive the signal from the detector into the Arduino. We're using four LEDs, 8, 10, 11, 13, for four different um, buttons. And the setup basically says, you know, kickstart the serial, designate the four LEDs as outputs, wait half a second, and enable IR in, which is essentially initialize the library to start receiving data. At this point, uh, we print power on the serial. So from that point on, the, we should be able to receive packets of data. So maybe I should just delete this and explain how we're going to do this. So after I upload this program, what it's going to do is, as this line says, it's going to check that the code is received. So it's, it's basically in an infinite loop waiting to see if we have some data sent, some packet sent. And if so, if we do, it will print them as a decimal value right there. Now this this could have been a binary or a hexadecimal, but so a hex would have to be printed that way, but I've decided on decimals because it seemed to be the shortest way. So quite simply, let's have a look. Each each time I uh, press a button, like right now I'm gonna press number one it receives a unique code and that unique code is being printed so as you can see there's a huge range of numbers but the ones that i'm interested in are these 167 numbers and we're just going to copy uh this one and it was essentially created once i press number one on the button and we can write an if statement that goes like this if results dot value is that number then now I don't need the curly brackets if I'm only going to write one line then I can say digital right LED one high. so what this code should do is turn on the first LED upon me pressing the number one we're going to upload this and see if that happens. So there it is, number one, and the LED's on. So how we can turn this into a, a four LED program is really, really simple. Basically, you copy that four times and have that for LED two, three, four, and then go inside your serial monitor and say I'm going to press number two now, I can then copy the unique number, the unique 167 number for number two, and paste it here. And do the same for three and four. And I can also create another one. So we got one, two, three, four. And one that could turn off all the LEDs for which I can use for instance the OK button. So buttons 1, 2, 3, 4 turn on LEDs 1, 2, 3, and 4 while the OK button turns them all off. Anyhow I'm gonna get the unique numbers for these and then we're gonna test it. So here we are we've got four unique codes for LEDs 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the fifth one, which is the OK button, um, to turn them all off. Let's have a look. And I really wonder if I was to like aim at the ceiling, if this would actually work. Mm, not as well. well. Seems to actually. Three, if I aim. And there we are. Four LEDs triggered by these four buttons and should be turned off by OK. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna go on the other side of the room and see if I can turn them off. Well, 
I succeeded from about a meter and a half away. Um, one interesting thing about infrared is that it needs direct sight to operate. So it will bounce off of walls, but it cannot go through walls. It cannot even go through very, very thin objects. So if something is in the way uh, between, say, you and the TV, uh, your remote's probably not going to work. All right, that is probably the simplest infrared remote control circuit out there. And your turn to build it.